Hi guys. For Tunisian Tuesday today, I had started out filming and for some reason it didn't film. So I am going to tell you the two stitches that we are doing for that. We are doing the um, Tunisian seed stitch and also the Tunisian double crochet stitch as well as learning to bind off. Um, I have already started working on the other piece to finish it, which I'm going to show you how to even up your edges, those kind of things, some things you can use tricks to do that. Um, this is something that I've used with a lot of things that people have given to me um, to fix or to add to, to make it a larger afghan and say the edges weren't straight and I'm like, I'm not ripping it out because that's just too much work, so I will figure out a way to add to the edges, you know, where if you have edges that are crooked that you can even it out as close as possible. So that, I've already, I had already started filming that and started working on the other pieces, so I can't show you <laughs> where we're at in those stitches, and you know, that just happens to be one of those things. It happens. So anyway, um, I did want to tell you that I had already started teaching you how to do the Tunisian seed stitch when it started in. And it is a two-row two repeat that involves a knit stitch and a purl stitch. So I'm starting to show you how to do that. Like I said, uh, it just for some reason didn't film the first part and I thought it did. All right, guys. See you guys soon. Bye. We are going to do, it's not, it's a knit stitch followed by a purl stitch. And a knit stitch, remember, goes in between the two vertical bars. So we're going to start with the knit stitch and then a purl stitch. Knit stitch go in through the vertical bars and a purl see all that cat fur <laughs> and then a knit stitch followed by a purl and then a knit stitch followed by a purl You'll do that all the way across till you get to the end and at the end you will go through those two at the very back. Then it's the regular return pass which is yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through two, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, over, pull through two all the way to the end. Now that is your first row. It is a knit followed by a purl stitch. Now your second row for the seed stitch is going to be the opposite. And as you can see you have the bar right here, the little bump, tells you it is a purl stitch. So that one you are going to put a knit stitch in. Now for this first one it's a knit stitch so we're going to put a purl in the first stitch. Then followed by the knit stitch, purl, knit stitch, purl, knit stitch, oops, purl, trying, trying to make a new shortcut followed by a knit stitch and then in the very last you'll go through those two bars and your return passes as normal. Yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through two, all the way across to the end. And that is it. It is a simple two row repeat so we'll do those two rows again. So for the first one you can see you have a purl stitch because you see you have the bump here. So it's going to be a knit followed by a purl 
knit stitch followed by a purl knit stitch go in between the two vertical bars followed by a purl knit stitch followed by a purl all the way across to the end and then you will pick up the last two bars as normal then yarn over pull through one pull through two yarn over pull through two over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, all the way across, and then the second row again. It starts with a purl, followed by a knit stitch, purl. knit, purl, knit, purl, knit, all the way across till you get to the end and then you're going to go through those last two, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through two, Turn over, pull through two, and all the way across the return pass is as normal. Now you're going to repeat those rows as many times as you need to for your seed stitch pattern. Now the next stitch we're going to learn is the double crochet stitch and basically it's as simple as you think it is but you need to build up this first stitch to a higher level so you'll chain one and then when you go into this stitch here you're going to yarn over and go through as if to do a per, uh, slip Tunisian simple stitch yarn over pull up a loop yarn over pull through two. Then you will yarn over, go through like a simple stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. And you will do that all the way across. Again, you're going to yarn over as if to do a double, go through the vertical bar like a Tunisian simple stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two and you're going to do that all the way across to the end I think I said across should be across to the end and when you get to that last stitch you're going to yarn over and go through both of those loops pull up a stitch yarn over pull through two so that will finish that for your double crochet. Now your return pass is the same as normal. Yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, all the way across. Again, what you need to remember is you're now you've gotten to the end but you do have to bring up that stitch so it will be as tall as the rest of them so you will do a chain one to begin then yarn over go through the stitch pull up a loop yarn over pull through two yarn over go through the vertical bar pull up a loop yarn over pull through two all the way to the end when we get to the end I'll show you what we do at the end you're going to be surprised you gotta get through my two loops
And now I'm at the end. And as usual, we're going to yarn over. And we are going to look for the two vertical bars. Again, go through those, pull up the loop, yarn over, pull through two. Same thing. Then it's yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, all the way across to the end. And that is the Tunisian double crochet stitch. And you can do as many rows as you like of it. As you can see, it creates a nice thinner fabric. It lays a little flatter, but it is a little lacier. So, all right, now to bind off, it's as simple as going through the loop as if to do a Tunisian simple stitch, pull through and yarn over. Go through, pull up, pull completely through, yarn over. It's pretty much like a slip stitch. And this is a bind off. You can bind off in the stitch if you want to. I will show you that in just a second and then you would pull through that as if normal. And then you would just pull through to do your to tie off your end. Now to bind off in stitch would be a little bit different. Let's go back to the beginning. And that would be that we would actually chain as if to do that double crochet. We're going to do that double crochet bind off. Then we would go through like a double crochet, pull up a loop, pull through two, but actually pull through all of it. Yarn over, go through that, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, but pull through completely. which I guess in a way you could consider it a half double crochet. But every book that I've seen it in, this is binding off in the stitch pattern of a double crochet. So that if your last row was a knit purl, as in a seed stitch, you would follow that, but you would simply go through it just like normal. So then you would get to the end, pull through your two, yarn over, pull through two, pull through one, and then you would do your slip stitch to finish off your binding. And that is it. We are through with this. Um, you would cut your yarn. Um, you can cut it longer, you can cut it shorter, whatever. I would leave a little bit of a tail. Um, we are going to crochet it in, but now next week we will start filling in some of these gaps to straighten this up. And you'll notice you do have one edge that is pretty straight, or you should have one edge that is fairly straight. It may not be completely straight, like I have here little bumps here and there, but that is going to be your easier edge to bring up to a straight edge. Um, when we do get to this next week, what I want you to do is to take stitch markers and I want you to mark where your dips are in your fabric. Just place a stitch marker like here. You would place a stitch marker here and here and then you would come along place one here all the way up to here. On this side it might be around here to here and then again here to here that you would place stitch markers. That is so you know where you need to build up your stitches. That is the only thing I will tell you that you can go ahead and do once you finish your piece and bind off. Um, that is just to make it a little simpler for you when we get into making the edges a little straighter. All right, guys, see you next week. Hope you enjoyed that. And everybody have a blessed week. Be kind to one another. Be kinder to yourself. I'll see you again soon. Bye.